I will bless the Most High at all times, and His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back for another Real Talk. My title now says, The Meaning of Amazing Grace. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Isaac. Um, once again, I'm still answering questions. Uh, my take on the song Amazing Grace and the meaning of it. Let me give you a hand clap, brother. Um, first of all, let me say this. That is the first time anybody have ever asked me on here about Amazing Grace and where it come from, the lyrics about John Newton and what it truly mean and the type of man that this old messed up man was and why are we still singing this song um, and not really getting a deeper understanding about it. Um, I feel you. I feel your email. And uh, I'm going to say some things in this video that's going to make a lot of black people mad because we love to continue to sing and do stuff, tradition, and, and be involved in so much stuff, but we never want to study and ask ourselves, why am I singing this, or why am I doing this, or where did this come from, why am I doing this other than my mom and them did it, they mom and them did it, the forefathers did it, on and on and on, did it, did it, did it, did it. And I'm not an ignorant person, brother. I'm a man who loves to read. As a matter of fact, everything I get involved in, if it's not, if I if I look at it, it's not lining up with the most high. And it's evilness, it's, it's going against his will, I'm out of it. You know, the Lord shows me what and what not to do. So I do read, brother, and I have studied this a long time ago. So I said, you know what, this would be a good real talk video to do right now on the song Amazing Grace. Many organ players, piano players, preachers, singers, directors sing this song every Sunday. But my question is, how many of us know about the meaning of Amazing Grace other than it sounds good, to, it, it, it sounds so good in the key of A flat or it sounds good before the preacher preach. So what I want to do is just teach a little bit about John Newton and then I'll be out of the way because some of us have never heard this before and then a lot of us have but when you look at this song the true meaning um, John Newton was a slave master and John let me say John Henry Newton this English sailor also we can call him this man was so messed up Seem like one of the worst people that you can run into. The attitude that he had, his ways, his his wickedness, his evilness. I'm talking about the man that wrote this song. Some of us don't know this. The same one that wrote Amazing Grace. How he was. And when you when you study, if you think I'm lying, just Google John Newton, John Henry Newton. Read about Amazing Grace. Read it. Get your, get your understanding. Now, we know that grace and mercy is why we are still here. I'm not talking about the most high. I'm talking about the, this man, John Newton, and why he came up with this song. We love the grace and mercy. Some of us are using it as a license to sin, and we're going to get a great rude awakening on that day. But not to jump off into that. John Newton, for a period, he... We can say he he later on became a, a slave, a slave ship. Um, what you call them captains? I guess he was he was with the British British slave trader. So he did give his life over to the Most High. But look at what had to happen. And then I even wondered in my mind, did he really give his life over to the Most High? And then from reading, you'll be like, some will say, I think he did. Some will say he did. But this man did some terrible things. But he had a change of heart because on that ship came a, a huge storm, a deadly storm that could have ended his life. And right then is when he looked up and started thinking about the one who he rejected. And then that's when he came to Christ. But it took that storm. Now, the question is, if the storm never would have came, what would have happened? So in other words, this song was a testimony 
This man was talking about himself in this song while we always want people to shout behind Amazing Grace. And I'm, I'm going to get a little bit deeper in a minute because when I look at this testimony for him, he was talking about himself. When you look at these words very closely, he, he started off saying, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. But look at the very next word. He said that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. So look at this from a from a slave trader. He said that saved a wretch like me. We can teach our on a whole other video on the word wretch, couldn't we? Because when you look at wretch, and then you can also tie this in as a whore. You ever hear somebody call somebody you wretched whore? Or women was always called the wretch a whore. You wretched. Wretch is a, a, a messed up, miserable, unhappy, worthless, pathetic, pretty much helpless person. Now somebody just got mad because they just sung this song last week. And, and, you, and, and when you look at it, when they tied in, especially back then, it, they would always call a female a wretched person. You wretched whore. Because it was a lot of hoarding going on back then and like more going on now. So sometimes when you, when you, now just think about this. This is just something to think about if you ain't never been a whore in your life. And just say you a young lady, you up singing this song. And you look at some of these meanings in these words. You look at the true meaning of this man, the way he sung the song because this was his testimony. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a whole like me. Hmm. I once was lost. See, that, that'll mess you up when you really think about that. That saved a, a, a whole, a, a miserable, messed up. But we can also say we all done been messed up in our life. But I, I had a problem with this when a woman asked me to sing this song. And once I started learning the meaning of it, just like Halloween, just like all of this other stuff that we want to celebrate, I started seeing a problem with a whole lot of stuff. And that's why JT took himself out of it. And I was like, I don't even want to sing that song. It's just like when I listen to so many other songs. They sound so good. And, and oh, I fly away. I can't wait till I fly away and put on my, my wings and fly to the other side. And the preacher like to hoop and holler about flying away. And I'm going to walk around heaven in my, my gold slippers. And my. It sounds so good. But really, is it biblical? That's what I started doing in my life. I'm not telling you to do what I do. I just started looking at what was biblical. And then I, now I'm looking at a lot of songs and be like, let me go to the author. Let me go to why this song was wrote. What was the true meaning of this song? So when you pop the question about Amazing Grace, and when I got to that part after how sweet the sound that saved the wretch, this man was talking about his old wretch itself. How pathetic he was as a man. He, he was truly a messed up person. Just being real, y'all. Have you ever looked up what I'm saying right here? When you look at what was done to slaves, then you look at slave masters, we already know. It, it don't make you feel too good. Now check this out. John Newton's mother was a Christian. This man was brought up in a the, in the Christian house. And his mother wanted him to be a minister. But his mother died when he was about six years old. See, this go to show you how you can be brought up in a Christian home and still be raised up as a devil. Because when you don't have the Holy Ghost, you far away from it. This man let it be known how evil, how messed up. He even said that he was a blasphemer who rejected God. I'm talking about the same one that wrote Amazing Grace. But it took that huge storm. That's what it took. By him being a slave ship captain, so he knew about going through some storms. See, let me let me bring this out too. Because a lot of people don't even know. This same man that wrote Amazing Grace, John Newton, excuse me, Henry Newton, he also wrote a lot of dirty, low down, filthy poems. He wrote songs and poems, check this out, to pass time. So a lot of times when you don't have nothing else to do, you just start writing, don't you? Let me kill some time. It, it, it don't even have to be a whole lot of meaning and stuff. I'm just killing time. Let me write this down. So the question is, when he wrote Amazing Grace, was it really coming from the heart? Now let me ask a better question. 
when you sing it, is it really coming from your heart or are you singing it just to get attention? Just to hear people so just shouting all this stuff. See, I'm, I'm reminded of something. A lot of y'all don't like this message, but I'm just keeping it real. I'm reminded of something Brother Mitty Man said in one of his old videos about the young man that sung Amazing Grace and then the older man that came along right after him and sung Amazing Grace. He said the young man had a nice voice. He had went to school. They taught him how to sing and everything. But when the young man sung the song, didn't hardly nobody clap. Nobody really cheered him on. He said, but when the older guy came up behind him and sung the same song with the feeling, all people was crying out and shouting because some about the way the older man sung Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. He said after the after the service was over, the young man came up to him and said, I just don't understand why is it that you, you got all the attention. Everybody seemed to 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 respond better when you sung it, but I sung the same song. And he told a young man, he said, You know what, young man, you might know the song. Hmm. But I know the creator. Big difference. I know the I know the creator. The reason I'm saying this is because there's so many songs. And when you write a song, you writing a song according to the way you feel. But it's just like making movies and everything else. Now you can also do stuff just for money. So when I go back to what I'm saying here, this man, John Newton, same one that wrote all these filthy, dirty poems the past time, same one who wrote Amazing Grace after the storm and what happened when when he fell when he fell I like to say he fell to his knees and cried out. See, I gotta say this to the religious people. This is why I tell y'all all the time, religious people. Y'all always talking about the secular artists and the rappers and they lyrics. But when a man like John Newton, y'all y'all feel where I'm going. Old messed up wretched man like this man when he wrote a song like Amazing Grace that y'all sang faithfully every Sunday before they preach it's okay for John Newton who was pretty much a man with a reprobated mind it's okay for him to write Amazing Grace and you can sing that oh but when an R&B singer mm, uh oh or a rapper or anybody else a celebrity when they want to sing Amazing Grace it's a problem now when you look at the author of Amazing Grace and how messed up he was but you allow that song to be played why you down in the R&B singer when they sang Amazing Grace Father I stretch my hand in thee no other help I know somebody, somebody not understanding what I'm saying it becomes a problem. Y'all see all this confusion? But this man in the middle of the storm fell down and, and, and it, it seemed like it, it was, if it wasn't for the storm, he would have continued to live the same lifestyle. Mm. Now that's just my opinion. But he did a, Psalm would say he did dedicate his life to God in the middle of that storm because he knew he was about to die. Y'all, this is why I got to feel what I'm singing. But I like what my sister Lady D said about music and singing because when you get past the author, you know, let me say it like this. This is why every song ain't for me. Somebody somebody know what I'm talking about. Uh, people, when you sing, a lot of people always want you to, can you sing that for me, brother? Or sister, will you mind singing this song? This, that song might not even be your testimony. You might not even feel that song because that song might not be for you versus the song that's for you. See, I can't sing everybody's song. I wasn't the one in that. That's why it, when I look at these songs now, uh, 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 I'll give you another example a while back in my church when I first started going out there a man, a preacher asked me to sing Make Me Over Again by uh, Tony that song wasn't for me I wasn't trying to be in front of the church saying Make Me Over Again I'm just talking about me because that, that's saying to me that 
the Lord couldn't make me right the first time. Now nah, I don't want to. I don't want to be made over and over again. I can't sing that song. That song I don't feel. A lot of songs I don't feel. That's why I don't fool with them. To answer your other question, brother, I hope I hope you're still with me. So when you look at it, this man came up with this song after he prayed that God would spare his life. So I'm going somewhere with this video. And the reason why I'm saying it like this is because so many are singing, dancing, rapping, and doing so many stuff to things they don't have a clue about. And in our race, we love to continue to stay ignorant and stupid because the simple fact we don't want to read nothing. We don't want to get an understanding on where this comes from. But yet and still, a, 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 a rapper can come out with a song degrading the women, calling them all kind of bees and hoes, and they still going to continue to dance to it, shake their butt, and love it, and make money off of it. It don't nobody seem like that's a problem. So when I look at Amazing Grace from John Newton's standpoint, and why he did it, it was personal. Now, so many don't even know, once again, if you would really put yourself in that song and the lyrics and what it's saying, some of y'all probably wouldn't want to sing it no more because you'll be looking at yourself in the mirror mad at yourself. But I'm, I'm just being real. Not everybody going to feel what I'm saying in this video because Amazing Grace is a beautiful song. I'm not taking nothing away from the lyrics. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what it came from from this man's standpoint. If you really just look at these lyrics, see, I'm reminded of some line of Richard said. He said, soul is not a color. Soul is a feeling. So that let me know uh, that you can be black, white. I don't care what your color is. That's why when you look around in the world, now everybody's singing. Now everybody rapping. Now everybody dancing. It don't matter what the color is. Because soul don't have nothing to do with the color. It's a feeling. I like that. So when I look at this as I close out Amazing Grace, when I look at these lyrics, let's just let's talk through these lyrics real slow. You know it by heart. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. It, he, notice he didn't say like you. He said like me. That means that was personal. He was talking to himself. He said, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Because of what he was doing at that time, that man would look, that man was going through a lot and doing a lot. And then he came back and said, "Twas it was twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieve." Y'all see what I'm saying? He wanted that grace because then he knew that that storm was coming. He was about to end his life. Then he said, "How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believe." See, this is personal. Then he said, "Through many dangers, tars and snares." We had already come. Twas grace once again that bought us safe thus far. And grace will lead us home. A lot of us be singing this and don't even have a clue on what we're singing. He said, the Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. When we've been there 10,000 years Bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than we've, than when we first begun. Then he went right back to Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Do y'all feel what I'm saying now? Just a little bit, just to give you a, another outlook on Amazing Grace, where it come from, John Henry Newton. Why it was why he did it, what type of man he was. If you're gonna sing some or be involved in some, whatever you do in his life, shouldn't you want to know where it come from? What type of person they was? Are we gonna continue to follow and do the same thing that our mom and daddy did? I, don't, I haven't met none of my ancestors. I mean, I ain't gonna say ancestors because they all everybody dead and gone. But I have not met nobody yet that came to me and told me the true meaning on where Amazing Grace came from. Now I remember um, a long time ago watching Dick Gregory speak about this because Dick Gregory said something I'll never forget. I can't remember what clip it was in, but Dick Gregory said, "He said I would rather be called a nigger or 
would I would rather hear black folks call each other nigger than to keep sit than to uh, see a black woman keep standing up in church singing Amazing Grace. And I understood what he meant by that. Once I understood and went back to study on how Amazing Grace came about, the song, the author. And he, he said, when you look at the part about that wretch, and I, I swear I understand him, you know, wretch is also considered a whore. And he put the mic to this sister in, in, in the, um, the service he was in, and he told her that she didn't want to sing it because he said, sing that same thing, but we're going to put hoe in front of the word wretch. And she didn't want, she couldn't say it. And he told her, you ain't never been a whole sister. He said, so why stand up and saying something? Ooh, that was deep to me, that you ain't never been. You ain't never been a whole. Don't, don't stand up and sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a whole, a wretch like me. Because back then, wretched was also tied in with female prostitutes. So when you get to understanding, now I'm going to close out saying this once again. This is just a little study on the word. Uh, the song I mean um, you do what you gonna do but like I say when you ask me questions y'all know this I'm still answering questions I'm doing all these videos now answering questions I'm, I just want you to be able to accept my answers that I give back to you and I dare you to go study on this song I dare you to study John Newton John Henry Newton and Amazing Grace and then get back with me in this video and let me know if you just see a little bit of truth or what I'm talking about. Am I saying you're going to hell for singing Amazing Grace? No. Because there was some hoes that need to sing Amazing Grace. That used to be hoes. And they and, and you look at it. That's why I say I can see the other side of the song. But at the same time, if you ain't never been a whore. If you ain't never been low down. Some of y'all probably might have just been. I was just drunk. And you know what I'm saying? So when you start looking at these lyrics. I don't like putting myself in something. When I when I start looking at that song, I start feeling like, man, I ain't never been that low down and dirty like this man was. But at the same time, I wasn't perfect neither. But when I start looking at them lyrics, I'm like, I ain't never, I ain't never want to do people this way. I've never done people that way. When I look at how slaves were done by their slave masters, slave owners, man, it, make, it used to make me want to just kill them. So I understand about this amazing grace. And y'all know what I like to say about grace. I call grace God's riches at Christ's expense and what he done on the cross. So it is amazing grace. Y'all have a wonderful blessed day. Peace.